This is Christian Buckley with another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with Mike. Hey, how's it going? Hi there. Hi, thanks for having me, Christian. So people don't know who you are, where you are, what you do. Why don't you give us that rundown? Um, so my name is Mike Hartley. Um, I'm known as kind of heart of the Midlands in the community. Um, so I'm based in rugby in England, so home of the uh, great ball game. And yeah, I'm big fan of Microsoft community. Uh, I always joke that I'm kind of the cheerleader for the Microsoft community, but without the pom-poms and the mini skirt, because that's <laughs> definitely not an image anybody wants in their heads. And so, yeah, I've been working with Dynamics since, oh, version three. Um, so quite, quite a long but while. Nobody else was working with Dynamics. Yeah. yeah, yeah, basically, basically. Um, and yeah, taught myself the whole thing and got into it that way and then kind of dipped in and out as global economy sh rose and shrunk and all that jazz and found my way back into the wonderful world of 2011 and 365 and yeah. power platform and here i am today uh not going on. and so you earned your mvp is it business applications yes it is business apps yeah excellent it's yeah. a growing area of the mvp community but you know it, it's funny so i so i left microsoft in 2009 went to work for a little uh microsoft partner in downtown seattle doing sharepoint migration and then got acquired 10 months later but we had built our entire uh, online presence around Dynamics, so uh, in and Hyper V as well, and so we we're doing oh, demos cool. and, and building out some really slick stuff. Although we had a small office in downtown Seattle, and the servers for our Hyper V were running there in a giant box. It was like quite, but you could feel the heat, the waves of of warmth coming yeah. off of that from across the room. Um, and, and when we got acquired, we we tried to convince the acquiring companies, company Acceler, to like, take a look at what we did with Dynamics. And I mean, you breathe on our website and it was automated and it was just a beautiful solution there. And they're like, nope, moving to Salesforce completely. Oh, oh. But it was interesting, like throughout. So I had been, you know, till pre-COVID, uh, been attending in person every one of the partner conferences. And every year I would spend time with the product teams going through and trying to understand what's going on. Is this the year? Is this the year that Microsoft breaks out with dynamics <laughs> and, and what's going on and are the investments there? And, and one thing I could say is like two years ago, it was the last in-person event. Uh, it was really starting to move in that direction. It was, you know, Microsoft's taking it seriously. I think a lot of that had to do with Really, since Satya came on board and came from that uh, side of the business, that he yeah, Satya and uh, James Phillips as well, yeah, really right. driving it and pushing it forward. And I think the whole power platform, just that that explosion of um, the whole um, citizen developer kind of ethos and mentality about building this open platform which it always makes me laugh because crm 2011 was kind of dubbed as xrm you can do anything you want with it it's designed more as a framework and that's what everybody did with it which is why you've still got people who are still using it today um and then of course along comes power platform and it's like well actually yeah we were kind of doing some of this stuff back in 2011 and yeah. you're talking about entities which of course we now call tables in uh, microsoft parlance but you're talking about entities and all this lot and we were doing that and it, it, it's been really funny to watch people get to grips with something that's just been kind of stuff that i've actually really enjoyed using over the years because it's just so easy to build stuff out so easy to get stuff out the door quickly that 
users can get to grips with nice and easily. Um, but with Power Platform, all of a sudden, it's not just business case, it's everything. It's people doing it for hobbies. It's, um, I mean, I've, I've got my home inventory. I've got barcodes that I scan in and I've got my home inventory in a power app and um, and all this sort of stuff. So it's it's really, really been cool, cool to see. Yeah, and I know that there's a lot changing too. Uh, the the fact that um, you know a lot of friends that had moved years ago over into you know kind of the DevOps world and and Microsoft didn't have for a long time like a really strong voice or story over in the pure DevOps. And so you had people that were hardcore community people, Microsoft you know ecosystem people that were like, yeah, my business shifted over this direction. I really don't pay attention to what's happening in the Microsoft side of things, but there's power platforms you talk about. And with dynamics, uh, it, you know, in general, there's more and more of interoperability and data movement in between. And of course, partnerships with all the big players and sharing of data. Um, there's an announcement of, uh, so New Relic just did uh, uh, like an acquisition and are doing more integration across with Teams and Power Platform because they're seeing that, well, hey, collaboration is really important to the DevOps world. And there you go. You have data platform and business applications, you know, MVPs that are right in the middle of all of that mainstream, mainstream DevOps activity. Yeah. You know, exciting things that are happening. Yeah, yeah. And it is. I mean, it, it it's just it it astounds me what you what you can actually kind of do with it and i mean um i've i've spent the last couple of years in particular focusing a lot on accessibility mm -hmm. um and building accessibility um a, a, a fellow mvp mark christie he asked me if i'd um look after the accessibility track at scottish summit Mm -hmm. um for 2020 um so rounding up speakers doing all the usual evaluation what have you and uh people always say i'm i'm the kind of person who doesn't go half measures i go all in on something so it's like okay well if i'm going to do this i'm going to find out about the subject i'm going to do a bit more in depth um and i'm going to dare myself to speak on the subject as well and so as I've been pushing forward, it's just finding ways of moving the business application space into a more accessible area for people who might have things like color vision deficiencies or color blindness, as mm -hmm. most people would know it, or um, people who use keyboard navigation instead of mouse. Um, it, it makes me laugh that does because I was a keyboard jockey going way back when back into my childhood and late 70s and what have you it was all keyboard there wasn't such a thing as a mouse and you'd write code moving through the years in visual basic and delphi and all those cool things and you'd have your tab stops just purely as a matter of course it was natural because a lot of us were keyboard jockeys we still used our keyboards rather than our mice Right. And as we've become more Windows oriented, Mac oriented, app oriented, we don't use keyboards much, which if somebody can't use a keyboard, uh, sorry, can't use a mouse, yep. their experience of navigating apps can be really challenging. I mean, I, I, I sit there and I try using the keyboard to navigate. And it's just like... I. I, I know I can grab my mouse next to me, but I'm I'm like, no, I'm going to make this work. And I can't with a lot of stuff. And it's things like that, or people using screen readers. Yeah. And it's it's just exploded. And, um, and it's become a real, real big, passionate thing for me. It's just, it, it it's kind of the main thing that I speak about at events and the main thing I'm blogging about or publishing content about. Um, I mean, I do a lot about mental health and diversity and inclusion um, and things like that. But accessibility is probably my number one topic in terms of 
blog posts going out there these days and stuff that I'm talking about. And, and it's just amazing what you can build with the tools that we've now got. It's, it's, it, it's exciting. It really is exciting. It's good to see, uh, you know, at through the events and stuff that Microsoft is focusing more and highlighting that kind of content as well. It, it's interesting. Um, there was a building, I think it's, Microsoft is expanding on their main, their original campus, and they've torn down all these small buildings and are building this super campus. But one of the one of the buildings there, like building 23 or 25 or something like that, was where a lot of the accessibility, like the lab was. And so I, I had a friend that worked in that for a different group, but in that building. And I like went and visited him, had lunch one day. And I'm like, you know, what, what's going on over in this side? He's like, have you not been in here? Like, come take a look at this. And we spent about 45 minutes walking through, looking at a bunch of the solutions. Microsoft, of course, has been involved in a lot of that with like keyboard design and the, the unique, the ergonomic stuff. And, you know, but thinking about how it's great to see all those examples and from a product, like a hardware standpoint. But just something as simple as the fact that in a you know Microsoft centric you know device and system, you have the keyboard, you have the mouse. But I also like find when I'm working, like I touch my screen a lot, where I remind myself, oh yeah, this is not a touch screen that I'm working. Oh, I do that all the time. But when I'm working there, it's like I find like I, I'm sure if I set up a video camera, like the way that I work, especially on my laptop. And I'm going between touching something, flicking, moving things around, mouse and keyboard controls of those different things, depending on what the activity is, but how much that's evolved and changed so that it allows people that are keyboard centric, that want to be able to do things without moving, especially I have my, my older brother had severe carpal tunnel. Uh, he was an artist and, and had that issue. And so yeah. understanding you know, that not moving, you know, having the movement and being able to do things via the keyboard versus the, the mouse versus purely in touch screen. It's just, it's amazing and change dynamically, depending on if you undock and, and move things around to make it more accessible as well. Some really cool things that are happening in that space. Yeah. And again, I think, um, I think again, um, Satya Nadella has driven a, driven an awful lot of this. I mean, um, the, y you go back a couple of years and the Xbox team released the adaptive controller. And I remember seeing the advert with the kids who were gamers wanting to play games with all their friends, but they, they might have limbs missing or uh, or what have you, and they, they weren't able to play, or and all of a sudden you've got this adaptive controller, and you just, I mean, I, I, I to this day I cannot watch that advert without crying because it just, it, and 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 then you take something that's as complex as that, in that it allows them to plug in all the devices that suit their needs and their their requirements but then they turn around a couple of weeks ago and they announced the surface adaptive kit which is a bunch of stickers it's nothing more complex than a bunch of stickers but it just changes the way that people can use their devices and it's like okay this is kind of end-to-end -end thing you, you you're looking at devices you're looking at gaming you're looking at hardware and then you're looking at software um i mean windows 11 th the amount of accessibility that's baked into that is yep. is mind-blowing um i mean I, i've been running the preview on multiple devices ever since day one yep. and i came to do an actual complete clean install off a usb stick um a couple of weeks ago and first time I'd run the complete out of box experience, booted it up and the first screen, it's talking to you and it's talking to you about enabling accessibility features. Yeah. Whereas with Windows 10, you had to go through about yeah, two thirds of it yeah. before you even got. And the first voice you heard was, hi, I'm Cortana. Right. It's like all of a sudden this shift and it, it it's brilliant because I, 
as, as I talk to talk about this more and more and as I talk to people more and more I get people coming up to me and they're like yeah actually you might not believe it but I use these tools and yeah actually I that's really cool for me that helps me a lot and then I get other people who are just like wow we never actually realized but okay we're gonna start investigating this and and it's really cool. I mean, you've got people like Donna Sakar, who is just, I mean, she's a force of nature. She is, she is formidable, but she is just really driving it forward. And, and the accessibility team at Microsoft is just growing from strength to strength. And the people that are coming in on board with it and everything else. And you, you've got um, Jenny Lay Flurry and all, all that. And it, 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 it's really exciting. It's, we're, we're starting to see technology. I mean, the geek in me almost thinks it's bringing us back to Gene Roddenberry's Star Trek vision of technology where yeah. it, it, it includes everybody. It doesn't exclude, it's used to include everybody. I mean, what well, am I? I think you'll probably agree with me. The first company to get like the little device where I could touch it and go, doo -doo -doo, and I could be like Cortana, blah, 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 like right there. Oh, like wins. How yeah. cool would that be? Have that connected. Why doesn't that device exist yet? I know. I know. I'd love that. I would absolutely love that. I mean, seriously, somebody needs to come up with that because it will <laughs> sell out immediately. Yeah, if all it does is connect to your phone and you have to have your phone within three feet of you or whatever, fine. Have my phone in my back pocket, have the communicator right there, be able to do translator services like right there, right there directly yeah. to my earpiece. Yeah. And you think about that as well, though. I mean, have, having the translator services, all of a sudden you're at an in-person event. So you go to some of the big Microsoft events when we get back to being in person again. Mm -hmm. And you're able to communicate with people who you might not be able to communicate with because... You've got the translator right there right. and you can communicate. It, it, that reminds me too, is that, I mean, the Cortana stuff, I know it's a lot of times has gone under the radar, but the voice controls is another accessibility, you know, set of options that are out there. Like I, I have her turned off here on my, my machine just because it's super annoying to then talk about Cortana and then have her interrupt. Like I, the others are listening. So I'm, oh yeah. Their name. Yes. Oh yeah, I never say the names. <laughs> but it, it, you know, it's it now it angers me when there's like an ad on TV or something that comes up and they do that and they think they're being funny and clever by doing that. It's just super annoying. Oh yeah. But, uh, you know, so that's really cool. Now, one of the things that uh, so I do productivity tips. So I've done webinars for years around this. I have a good friend Tom Duff, and he and I do content and things together around that. And some of the most popular topics especially when we go and present live where we pull productivity tips across, you know, in the entire stack. So office apps, all of the various, you know, desktop apps, Word, PowerPoint, OneNote, we talk about Exchange and SharePoint, all those kinds of things. But the accessibility issues, again, you don't, you don't think about how pervasive like the need is for these things. And it might be not, people that, that don't consider themselves or, or aren't physically impaired in any way but say, you know, I just find myself more productive and able to do something that's just a more natural way for me to work and interact with the machines. That kind of goes back to your point of what we see is we're starting to see, uh, we're starting to see a, a, a like a more of a merging of the human centric design that we've yeah. talked about for my entire career. We've talked about that kind of thing. And then Hey, look at this. It's a, it's a new colored button in a browser. Like, yeah, that's, that's not, uh, yeah, design. that's not what we're, we're talking about, but you know, you have a lot of the IOT and the, the wearable devices like that movement is, is starting to it, some cool things about that, but there was still always kind of a disconnect between yes, but the way that we really work. I like what Microsoft is doing with like Viva and, and saying that, well, we need to mm -hmm. better understand, you know, within the context of these enterprise applications that we're working with, 
how are people actually working? What needs to happen next is the merging of this accessibility, wearable IoT in with what like Viva is trying to understand about the nature of collaboration and, yeah. and communication and that side of things. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, I don't know where that's what I'm sure Microsoft is, is looking at that. Maybe it's a Microsoft research thing. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. Yeah. Well, just, we've got a couple more minutes, but you know, what was, what else would you say about like your path to becoming an MVP? Cause when did you earn your MVP? Um, so first of October. So oh, yeah, crazy. it's, it, it, yeah, it's so new. My, it still squeaks when I say it, it's, um, <laughs> it, it's sweet. In fact, I actually got my box through the, uh, from FedEx today. So, uh, oh, it, it kind of became a bit more real when I actually opened the box. Um, but yeah, I mean, really my path, has has been through just that passion for accessibility um there's there's not many people in the biz app space or power platform world really being overly vocal about it i mean when i get passionate i get passionate and i i scream it from the rooftops i'm banging on doors i'm 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 slamming on desks and saying look you've got to let me speak about this um and th there's some really cool stuff out there but they're not necessarily the people who would shout about it whereas me I'm kind of just like no no come on this has got to be important so that's really been the path for me is that accessibility and working with the community mentoring people um just lifting people up and helping at events work working with events um working with some really fantastic people out there to just say how can we drive this forward what can we do how can we do it better um and just that that constant learning that i you're learning from me but i'm learning more from you at the same time and it's just that that sort of ever increasing spiral of learning that's going on it's been absolutely absolutely fantastic well and and it's great to see to the attention being you know the uh, again just it, it's an area where uh, you know if people don't have their their needs met to attend an online or in-person event for example and usually they, they don't speak up about that and so to to find that kind of that that that, that section of the community you know they're finding a voice for hey here's different ways of doing things and and people do need to be more vocal around hey this would really help me I, this is great that we're doing this and and you have to approach it the right way because people i believe have good intentions like we're we're trying to do things out in the community we're trying to put things on there it's like but if there's something that's missing there just say hey you know it would be great there's this segment that is not able to participate in the same ways. Here's the way that you could go in and do that. The fact that we have more tools, we have more options, we have more ways of, of getting involved. It's good for the community across the board. So yeah. really appreciate the work that you're doing there. Oh, thank you. And the, the one thing I would say is don't be afraid by the size of it. It's never going to be perfect. Nobody is ever going to achieve perfection with accessibility because it's not possible. Um, but just take those first steps, just get into habits and work towards it. And each time you do, you, you one step further away from where you began. And it, it, it's just well worth doing. Agreed. And so, Mike, really appreciate your time, Mike. And, and uh, for people that want to find out more about you, get in touch with you, what are the best ways to reach you? So um, it's rather confusing, but um, I am uh, I am heart365, but that's H-A-R-T, not as in heart. It's heart as in a stag and also part of my surname. So H-A-R-T365 on Twitter or go to H-A-R-T365. 365.co.uk um you can find me on linkedin mike b hartley um i i'm all over the place if 
if, if you search for accessibility and Mike Hartley, you're guaranteed to find me. And I'd love for people to connect with me, talk to me. I'll answer questions. I'll have conversations. I'd love to. And thank you for having me. Well, thanks for being here. And we'll uh, hopefully catch up with you soon. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you very much. Wow.